Oh, look at this gross passenger side parking brake cable. Shredded. And I got broken brake lines. Fantastic. In the middle of a lift on Rack J, and I think now would be a perfect time to get rid of these old drums, put on some disc brakes. Yeah. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. We are right smack dab in the middle of our XJ lift. We did three inches on the front of old Rec J here. Now we spun this Jeep around. We are doing the back. I got the rear leaf springs off and uh, got, a, got a little issues here with some rotted brake lines and I was gonna repair them. I figured, you know what? Let me just get rid of these drum brakes, put on some disc brakes so you will finally get a XJ disc brake conversion <laughs> over here on the project. So here we go. Got to do uh, drum to disc on a, this is going to be a Chrysler 8.25 rear end. So let's go. Okay, guys, I'll show you what we got going on here. We got a broken brake line. Uh, it leaked probably every ounce of brake fluid out. I plugged it up with this punch, but uh, it was just too late. We're going to have to replace all the fluid and bleed the brakes. We could change that proportioning valve while we're up there doing all that stuff. Over here, we got our ripped e-brake cable. Oh, it's just shredded the pieces. So we're gonna have to replace that anyway. So I figured, let's just go ahead and do the rear disc brake swap that I planned on doing many, many years ago. Just didn't get around to it, but we're gonna do it today. So if you haven't seen my other videos on the preparation for a disc swap. Preparation H. Go ahead and watch it now. <laughs> I will pop in links throughout the video. So what we did so far today was we got the body jacked up nice and high. We went ahead and took off the wheels. Well, I removed the leaf springs. You don't have to do that, but I did because I'm lifting it. But what you want to do is have good access to this drum brake backing plate area because we will be removing the axles. And to do that, we're going to take off the diff cover. All right, guys. So once again, this is a Chrysler eight and a quarter rear end. It's eight and a quarter because the ring gear is eight and a quarter inches. So that's why they call it that. I'm putting the disc brakes from a ZJ on that. So it's going to be a Dana 35 to Chrysler eight and a quarter swap. If you guys have been following the channel, you'll know that I have pulled this disc brake setup from a ZJ because I was originally going to do the disc swap in Black Beauty, which also has ABS on a Dana 35. Unfortunately, I just didn't get around to it. Now, Rec J stepped up. Rec J has a Chrysler eight and a quarter without ABS. So I'm gonna have to put the Dana 35 disc brakes on this Chrysler eight and a quarter. If I planned on doing an eight and a quarter disc swap right off the bat, I probably would have sourced my disc parts from a KJ Liberty. Both setups are very similar with the eight and a quarter and the Dana 35. Or if you have some extra funds, some money in the bank, a couple extra ducats laying around, you could spring for a brand new Terraflex set or something like that. The bottom line is there's more than one way to skin a cat and there's more than one way to disc an XJ. Got a couple stubby flathead screwdrivers. All right, the juice is loose. I'm uh, juice, juice. Your name's Juice. Yes, my name is Juice. Hey, this gear oil looks really nice. It doesn't stink. All right, gonna unscrew this and remove the cover all together. All right, next thing we're gonna do is rotate the drive shaft so we can get this carrier over here, keep going, keep going, keep going, right about there. That's what we want. Perfect. We want to get to this pin right here. Now you want to be very careful when you extract this little bolt. Uh, it could snap off. If you snap this off, you're dead in the water. I carry this around as a little uh, reminder to be careful. This was from a Dana 35. You can see this is like a 12 point. I think it's a quarter inch 12 point. This should be eight millimeter hex head. I'm going to refer to power tools. I don't want to strip this because uh, this is tight. There we go. Woo! That was a close one. Uh, 
take out this pin. That will slide out the center pin. Nice and neat. Without that center pin in the way, you can see the inside ends of the axle, and they are held in place by this C-clip. So all we gotta do is give the axle a little bump inward, and they should pop right out. One. Two. And once the C-clips drop out, you can carefully remove the axles. All right, now I got me a garbage box. The next thing we're gonna do is just start stripping away all these drum brake components and uh, throwing them out. So I don't like them. Actually, even though this is a, this is a pretty nicely tuned uh, drum brake. Huh, one of the best I've seen, actually. How unfortunate, but it's gotta go. Okay, right here, this is what we wanted to get to. These four 13 millimeter bolts. They're behind all the crap. All right, gonna slide the closed end of this 13 millimeter box wrench over the end of this e-brake cable. It should get right around these little clampy thingies, these little prongs. It should pinch them in. This way we can slide out this cable. Should just cut this cable, actually. It's friggin' broken. Huh. That did the job. There we go, e-brake cable is detached. Just gonna remove these nuts. We can save these, these are pretty good. Oh, come on baby. Slide this whole backing plate off. Watch out for these brake line guys. Still got the brake line attached. penetrating oil come on trusty three-eighths come on <laughs> there we go sometimes you got to rotate the whole brake now we get to have all that same fun <laughs> once again on the driver's side full of metal for the scrapper. At this time, I'm going to disconnect all these XJ uh, e-brake cables. I'm not gonna use these. Um, I actually have new ones already in stock, obviously. You guys saw that video. What am I talking about? <laughs> all right, Let's see if I can tweak this out. You know what? <laughs> I'm not reusing these. I'm just gonna cut them. There we go. Make my day a lot easier. All right. And I'll use the old 13 millimeter trick. Uh, rusty and crusty. <laughs> Got it. Alright, so what I did now was I threaded those nuts back on these studs and I'm gonna gently pop them out. I want the studs even with the nuts so I don't damage any threads. We do not need these studs, but why wreck them, right? Just back off these nuts. And there you have it. These studs could live another day. We're not gonna use these though. Way too short. All right, while I'm at it, I got easy access to these bearings and seals. Might as well do a quick rear bearing job and seals. Just gonna thread on this little puller tool. Rented this from AutoZone. I don't use these much, but uh, man, they really come in handy when uh, when it's time to do the job. Just gonna thread back this little cup, get some pressure on here, 
comes out nice and easy. There we go. Woo! Da, 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 da. All right, seals and bearings are out. Everything's pretty much stripped down. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all this rust, paint it real good, and we'll start reassembling everything. All right. Gonna glob some grease all up in here. I packed this as best as I could with some grease. I'll go ahead and slide this in as far as I can with my thumbs. And I'm just gonna use a mallet and the old bearings to drive home the new bearings. There we go. It stops moving, it's in. You can feel it's flush against that little rib inside. Beautiful. And we'll go ahead and tap in that seal the same way. There we go, that is beautiful. All right, other side. All right, guys, you remember these studs? We pulled these from the Dana 35 way back when, a couple years ago when I did the preparation video. Yeah, don't worry about it. I don't remember it either, but that's why it's on film. We could go back and refresh our memory. So check this out. These were the studs that came off. This Chrysler right in the corner, nice and small, right? We're gonna use these bigger studs because the disc brakes have a thicker mounting bracket. So we're gonna go ahead Get rid of these old studs. These are already cleaned. I chased the threads, they are beautiful. Of course, I'm gonna use a little anti-seize back here. Why not? And plunge them in. All right, just gonna throw a big nut over the stud and then just zip on this bolt. We'll suck in this stud right back into the axle. There we go, she's on. <laughs> Repeat. All right guys, remember this backing plate that I prepared for my Dana 35 on Black Beauty? Yeah, well, this thing is gonna be the exact same setup on the Chrysler eight and a quarter. The only difference is just gotta remount this middle ring to fit the bigger diameter Chrysler eight and a quarter axle. There we go. Open that up. Now it should slide right on to the eight and a quarter. All right, we got the new axle bearings in, the seals on. We pressed in our new studs, slathered this whole thing with anti-seize. We got a nice reamed out new backing plate to fit this larger Chrysler eight and a quarter. And uh, we got all the brake stuff assembled. Go back and watch that preparation video. I tell you how to do all that good stuff in that video. These holes should line up nice and neat now. There we go. Just gonna tap everything in. I'm gonna use a little thread locker <laughs> on the threads that don't have anti seize on them. <laughs> I don't want these coming loose. Beautiful. This baby's ready to receive her axles. Now we're gonna prepare our axles. What we gotta do is we gotta get rid of these short, stumpy little lug studs. And put on these nice, new, long ones. These were all ones I prepared in another video. So they're nice and ready to go now. Simple to swap them. Just thread on one of these acorn nuts. And just give it a tap. There we go. Not too much of a difference, but it'll give you about a quarter inch extra meat if you're gonna use nice thick aluminum wheels. All right, we'll just slide in our new studs. They say it helps if you freeze these things before you put them in. Well, let's 
Let's give him a whack. I can take some oversized washers, throw them on there, get this nut again, and we'll press them in with the big dog, the wall. There we go. Nice new studs on a pretty clean axle, ready to go in. All right, we got our axles ready to go. We got our diff ready to go. And we got our axle tubes all prepared. We got the disc brake mounting plate on here. We also have all the parking brake hardware. We got our new axle bearings in there. We got our axle seals looking good. All we got to do is slide in the axles. All right, I threw a wad of grease in my hands so this thing slides in a little better. Here we go. You want to try to get this as straight as possible. You don't want to punch out the inner bearings. You gauge where you're at. Up, down, left, right. Try to keep it right in the middle. Go ahead and pop this C-clip in. Now we can pull the axle back out into place. Gonna slide in the second C-clip. There we go. Now pull the axle out a little bit. All right, once both C-clips are in there, we can rotate this carrier again, and we'll put in our center pin. All right, let's slide in our center pin. Hopefully these little spider gears stayed where they're supposed to go. Might take some wiggling to get the gears aligned up in the right spot if it was out of place. Oh, look at that. Hey, <laughs> perfect. Nice. Pin is in. And we'll get this little nut in place too. The pin for the pin. There we go. Pin is in. Now let's just turn the axles. We'll turn the drive shaft. Make sure everything spins freely. Right, guys here comes one of my favorite parts of this build it's probably the most satisfying not the brake clean part that is fun but <laughs> that's what comes immediately after the brake clean uh, we get to put on our rotors this kind of drives home the fact that you actually did a disc brake conversion Oh yeah, like a glove. The kit I got right here says rear driver side because these are slotted and drilled. Nothing but the best. Of course I'll leave a link for all these parts in the description. All right, it's caliper time. I got a complete set at AutoZone. I do believe I used the ones I prepared for General Grievous a couple years ago, so I had to get new ones. And uh, these are just gonna go right on. Make sure you put the uh, pins in first because the leaf spring is in the way. You won't be able to get the pins in if uh, you put them on last. Beautiful. Time to switch gears. We're gonna go do some plumbing now. Had to get new brake line uh, that fits on the axle right here. This is the, uh, the little junction block. This kind of just threads right in here onto the breather for the axle. See that, that goes there. But uh, I had to replace this line because mine was ripped. I had this from an extra Chrysler 8 and a quarter in the back from Beach Jeep. And what I did was I welded the soft line to the disc brakes 
right to this tab here. This will hold this in place. And this right here is the hard line that goes right into the drums. So we're going to take the drum brake hard line to the disc brakes. This comes around. This goes right up to this junction block again. On the other side, the same thing comes right across. So what we're going to do is we're going to put on this new brake line. And with the three inch lift, it's a little bit tighter. It doesn't really fit too well in its little perch. So what I did was I took the brake line and I just dropped it down here. It's going to dangle a little bit, but at least it won't snap if uh, the axle bottoms out. So I'm going to go ahead and plumb this up. I'm going to hand thread the main brake line that comes from the front right to here. It's 3 8 from the factory, so I'm going to tighten this down. And this big line right down here, this is 5 8 So we'll go ahead and tighten this down. Let's go put on a breather. Crank down this little breather line. There. And if you're wondering, this is brake hose part number 70483. And we'll just clip this factory line right into its factory location. Almost perfectly stock. <laughs> there we go. Lines, junction block, go right back, hard line to soft line. Now we'll plumb up our calipers. All right, went to connect my calipers to the soft line. Check out these brake hoses. Both of them have little imperfections. Now, these are probably original 98 ZJ, so uh, they're about 20 years old. Uh, even though I already welded that plate there, I decided to uh, cut it off and get new ones. Now, this came with a, a bigger bracket. Uh, I cut that off, and now I'm just going to do a quick little... Uh, self tapper right there just self tap the one i welded to this one put the hard line in and then the soft line with the banjo bolt to the calipers this way i have complete peace of mind all new braking stuff should be great all right i'm just plumb these up and then i'll do the calipers got my new banjo bolts don't forget your copper crush washers they go on either side of this brake hose line it right up to the caliper Make sure you got your calipers on the right side too. You want the bleeder valve on the top of the little caliper piston. This way the air bubbles could get pushed out the top. Hand thread this guy on. This guy's a 14 millimeter today. I'm gonna crush this at about 30 foot pounds of torque. Should give us some nice little grooves. There we go, secured. Here's one more look at all my brake plumbing. It comes right out of the hard line, into this brake hose, into this little junction block, then it splits off into the left and right side. This is the breather valve for the axle. Comes down around here, this is existing factory hard line. Comes right down into here, into ZJ soft line, <laughs> the plates I welded. The new plates I just got comes on the brake hose. There we go, ZJ brake hose soft line. Look at that, new banjo bolts coming right into here, right into our new rear calipers. All right, that's it. Same thing on the other side. Now, proportioning valve time. All right guys, I removed my air box so you can get a better look. This is the XJ proportioning block. What we're gonna do is remove this little front nut right here. This is a 21 millimeter for me. Kind of stuck on there, there we go. Uh, this system is completely empty from my brake line being ripped. Um, you know what, I'll get a paper towel just in case. There we go. 
Ooh, careful. That spring will just shoot it right out there. All right, here we go. We got the cap, a little gasket. We got the spring. The valve is in here. And here we go. We'll slide out our little valve. Ta-da! So this is the XJ proportioning valve setup. I'm just going to set this right up here. Hey, remember this, guys? <laughs> this is about uh, two years in the making. Oh, just like all the other parts. Two years old. Hey guys, this might help you see it a little better. This is an XJ proportioning block. Pulled it from a 2000 XJ. Uh, this is a ZJ proportioning valve. I think I got this from a 98 ZJ. Uh, so here we go. Let's crack this open. Careful, there's a spring in here. Don't want this to shoot all over. There we go. All right, open up the guts. We'll pull out the valve. All right, let's look at the difference between these two. So ZJ up here, XJ down here. Now looking at the valves, you can see they're the same length. And the back of these are machined the same. But the major difference right here is the diameter of the shaft. The XJ has a thicker shaft. The inside diameter is the same, but the outer diameter is different. So because of that, check this out. These caps have different diameters, and they're supposed to fit snugly. Whoops. Snugly right on the valve. And there we go. Snugly on the valve. Now, what can happen is you may want to swap the ZJ valve into the XJ block and use the XJ cap, but that's no good because this doesn't fit tight enough. There's no seal. You will tighten this down and you will be leaking fluid out of this little cap. So that's no good. So you can mess up if you do it that way. You can't mess up if you put the ZJ cap on the XJ valve because it just doesn't go in. That's not going to happen. So, oopsie. Put you back on. So again, you're going to want to use the ZJ cap on the ZJ valve. The XJ cap on the XJ valve. They both fit in nice and snug. That's what you want. It won't leak. But also, because they're a little different, you're probably going to want to use the XJ valve and cap on the XJ block. And vice versa, if you pull a ZJ block, you're going to want to use the ZJ valve and the ZJ cap. The main difference is the spring. The ZJ spring is about a half an inch shorter than the XJ spring. So, again, for this, we will use... XJ block that's on the vehicle. We're going to keep the XJ valve. Slide that right in there. We're going to use the ZJ spring and back to the XJ cap again. Or at the very least, use a matching cap with the valve you choose. So that's what our setup is going to look like. Back to your installation video. Now look at that. We actually got a little bit of fluid left in there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put back the XJ proportioning valve right there because this is made for this block. That's what we want right there. Get a nice tight fit. Now we're going to go with the ZJ spring to give us the right amount of pressure we want. We don't want the rear brakes locking up. That spring should put less fluid into the disc brakes. And we're going to reuse the XJ cap. Push and tighten. All right, this sucker is just about empty. So we're gonna top this off with some more fluid. Now you wanna use new brake fluid. This is fairly new bottle. Uh, brake fluid is hygroscopic. It attracts water. Water is compressible. So if you get water in your brake fluid, you'll have spongy brakes. Let's tap this up. 
This is starting to drip out a little more. Ooh, that's everywhere. Good thing I got this paper towel soaking it up. Let's go ahead and we'll tighten this all the way back down, nice and tight. Now, if we did it right, it should stop pissing all over me. Alright, just gonna wipe up any brake fluid that may have splattered. Don't wanna rot my paint. And so far, the new valve is not leaking, so that's good. All right, there we go. So we have the XJ block with the XJ valve, the ZJ spring, and the XJ cap. Everything's nice and tight, no leaks. We'll cap this back on. Proportioning valve is bled. Uh, we'll top off the master cylinder, and then we'll start bleeding all the brakes. All right. All right, I got my trusty old Prestone bottle with a quarter inch tube sucked right into the cap. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the tube on the other end of this bleeder. There we go. Make sure that's on good. The bottle is upright. And let's watch the air bubbles flow. All right, give it a good squeeze. Ready? Pump it all the way down. Here we go. Okay. Down. Down. All right, pump it again. Okay. Okay, again. All right, this one's nice and bled. We'll go ahead and cap her off. Now we got a lot of pressure in this line. Just wanna make sure all our fittings aren't leaking. So far, this is good. We'll follow this baby up and around. We got our new line right here. This is good, this is holding. And up there is holding too. So we're gonna go bleed all the brakes. We did this one, now we'll do the other rear, then the passenger side, then the driver side. You wanna go from the furthest away from the master cylinder to the closest. And once you have bled the brakes, go ahead and top off your reservoir. Alright guys, last thing we're going to do is put on our diff cover, but not just any diff cover, a new G2 diff cover. Solid cast aluminum, we got our fill cap right here, make sure this comes off, this is a 13 millimeter. If this doesn't come off, <laughs> we're in trouble. But there we go, here is our fill port, if you will. And uh, you know what, just a heads up, when you're comparing this G2 cover with the stock cover, you will see that the fill plug is a lot higher up than this one down here. So if you have leaky seals, you might get some seepage because this is gonna way overfill it. But I guess more fluid will keep your gears cooler, I guess. Uh, I got new seals, I won't have to worry. So this G2 set, it also came with nice new hardware. That's great, I'll put that on in a minute. It also came with nice high temp RTV. So, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna schmooze some RTV all around our edge right here. Well, this was in the sun all morning, so it is coming out like a liquid. High temp, low viscosity. That's good stuff. All right, just smooth this out, make a nice even layer. Here comes our cover. Let's get one bolt ready to go. I'm just gonna go back over these and just put a couple turns on them with the wrench. I am not gonna snug them down just yet. We'll torque them when the uh, gasket sets up. So we'll just get everything hand tight. Snug as a Dan H on an old rug. under an XJ. All right, they're all evenly snug and we'll torque them down 
in about an hour or so. At this time, I'd like to introduce my Jeep Liberty brake cables. These are a little bit longer than the XJ and the ZJs. Actually a lot longer, but it's great if you're gonna do a big lift. You won't have to worry about the cables binding up on you. So I'm gonna unwrap these. There's the part number, actually. In my other video too, <laughs> my preparation video. So I'm gonna unwrap these and put them in. All right, we're gonna take the lever end and clip it in. Of course, the shorter one goes on the driver's side. Stretch this back into place. All right, squeaked in that new cable. Pretty tight. Sorry, I had to use both hands to get it in. That's in. Now we'll attach the other ends to the e-brake. We're just gonna loop that hook right through that little cable. Spreading this thing tight with the vice grip. And then we'll just lock this right where it goes. All right, that little groove. Cables are in. There's a lot of extra slack, so I went ahead and looped them and zip tied them up to the sway bar. There, <laughs> now they went dangling our way. But we still got plenty of play if we're flexing off road. All right, I'm gonna go around these things and give them a good torque. I don't know the specs, but uh, yeah, really good torque. <laughs> and tighten them down, and I'm gonna go crisscross again. Now we can fill her up with some gear oil. This is uh, nothing special. Regular 75W90. Uh, it's an open diff. I don't have any um, gadgets and gizmos in there. Whatchamacallit? Posi or lockers in there. So, just regular gear oil. Alright, with bottle number two, I'm just going to use the same lid from bottle number one. This usually doesn't take all of bottle number two. And then we have have an open cap, so we'll just reuse the one from numero uno. That's a gallon in there. Four quarts is a gallon, I do declare. Wow, there it is, Rec J on all fours. <laughs> Looking real good. guys there we go we got a rear disc brake conversion done on an xj finally on this channel hope you guys enjoyed i'm still probably gonna have to do my dana 35 rear disc brake conversion on black beauty but at least we got one so far in the project right <laughs> all right guys if you want to check out my lift videos i got a front lift video a rear lift video and a post lift video so uh yeah that's it guys thank you so much for watching remember to like and subscribe and i will catch you guys on the next project Peace.